If you're gonna run to this hidden lake, there's gonna be some in there. Yeah. Their husband, the guy that owned it, got shot and killed there like mm. three years ago. Really? Like crazy shit over there. Mm. Very secluded. Okay. Super secluded. Okay. And it looks like we're going to Hidden Lake. What could be hidden at Hidden Lake? We're gonna find out. If you're watching this, something happened to me and Josh. There is no shortage of missing persons cases here in the Arizona region where people are missing and missing with their vehicles. We're talking about a vast wilderness of desert and rock and areas where people are just not meant to be. As we kick off our collaboration here in the Phoenix, Arizona region with Bone Rush, I think it's really important for us to dive deep into some of the cases we have on our radar. Ella May Begay, Laura Venturi, Luther Valentine Smith, Miguel Cortez, Julian Renee Kirchhoff, Gilbert Rivas Rojas Jr., Bruce Allen Evans, Raymond Edward Shore, Alvaro Lavander, Caleb Joseph Powell. We're gonna hammer out as many lakes as we can over the next week or so while we're here. Who knows what we're gonna find, but one thing's for sure, we have a lot of people missing, a lot of vehicles that are missing along with them, and we have a lot of hard work to do, and let's get right to it. Tippy Town Lake, we plan to search it. We know it's about 19 feet deep and it has not been drained since 2016. And that coincides with multiple cases that we just discussed fit that time frame. Who knows what's in here, but we're right behind beautiful ASU, Arizona State University, Sun Devils. It's really beautiful here. I hope you guys like this search. We're using sonar. We have three different types of sonar. We have a down imaging, a side scan, and a live scope. So powering these systems is really important. And E360 has beautiful lithium products. Did you pay the cable bill? I thought that was your job. We literally put it in your name on your social security number for that very reason. Has this ever happened to you? Just sitting around, trying to watch a show, and your dummy buddy forgot to pay the bill, or worse yet, you have like 400 different streaming services, and you keep signing up for a new one, and you keep forgetting the sponsor of today's video, and the reason we've been able to do this awesome bone rush is this guy right here. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Channel Master. You see, this guy right here is an antenna. And you may be looking at it thinking like, who uses antennas anymore? Well, we do. And I'm about to show you why. Because this bad boy is gonna open up that bad boy to a whole lot of channels that didn't exist before. And you only have to pay for it one time. And it's pretty affordable, super simple. And you can get rid of all your streaming services that you're not using. So watch this. I'm gonna go put this on the roof and we're gonna watch a show. Ask Jeeps. How did you know that? I didn't even have time to read it. I give up. So as you can see, we got TV. Literally put the antenna up on the roof, hook the cable to the back of the TV, and now we have channels. You see, there's local broadcast networks everywhere that are still broadcasting TV in your area, but your TV doesn't have a strong enough antenna to be able to pick up any of those signals. One time fee. You buy the antenna once, no monthly fee, no subscription, no nothing, just a bunch of crystal clear channels and no monthly recurring bills. The products are made right here in the USA. They have a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you buy it and you don't like it, or it doesn't work in your area, we'll send it back. I'm gonna get you guys $50 off the price plus free shipping. So click the link in my description below, one time fee, get your house or cabin or off grid, you know, whatever you got going on set up with crystal clear TV with a lot of awesome channels. Thank you Channel Master for sponsoring the video and thank you guys for supporting us and supporting our sponsors.
Now go watch your favorite show. I'm probably gonna call in sick for us today. So we're gonna start off, we're scanning 80 feet on either side of the boat. We're coming across the boat ramp now. You can see really easy access for anything to come in here. That boat ramp is clear. We're gonna run the entire shoreline of Tempe Lake. When we leave here, we know there's no vehicles inside of Tempe Lake. What a beautiful area though. So far in Phoenix, what I've seen has just been absolutely breathtaking. There's a young kid over here throwing a magnet. I think he just pulled out a scooter. So let's, let's go talk to him. We do. Uh, we use magnets, but we're, we're looking for cars underwater. Cars related to missing people. Good. Yeah. And uh, so that we're out here, we're using sonar to scan. And uh, yeah, whenever we find cars, we use magnets and then we dive down the magnet line. Dude, he's way into it. A YouTube dude who's got like a million subscribers. Yeah. Who do you follow? Uh, I don't know. This guy, he has like this really big magnet. One time he pulled out like pieces of a car. Whoa, this is cool. This is a really big nail. And yep. how many cars have we found? Thousands of cars. Yeah, yeah, we just left Miami where we found 30 cars in one lake. Nice. Yeah. Keep throwing that magnet. Oh. You're gonna find something really awesome one day. Yeah. Doug, do you copy? Copy that. Vessel one. We're experiencing some difficulties with this trolling motor. build up to big debris pile so I'm just going to put a magnet in it just to make sure big fish swimming in it wow beautiful as we drop the magnet down onto it and it'll confirm whether or not it's a source of iron I threw it down you can see the magnet going in it's not magnetic Looks like there's some trees. You see the branches. You can see my magnets free now. So it's definitely not a vehicle. The rest really didn't look like a vehicle, but it could have been an older vehicle with some debris built up around it. Now we know it's not. saying that every search is a successful search because we know where something is not we know where someone is not and that's a that's a big deal in any missing persons case when you can rule out an area where someone may be or may not be Saguaro Lake, which is about 30 minutes to the east of Phoenix. This is the type of areas you gotta check when it comes to the foul play cases. Because you gotta consider, you're looking for something somebody's hit, they've gone out of their way to hide. scan Saguaro Lake in its entirety, all the way to the back end where there's some roads, dirt roads that lead down right to the water. Uh, we scanned all of those. 
all of the boat ramps, nothing here, but it's a process of elimination and we're on to the next location. There's some pits out here that are really out of the scope of public optics. Really easy dumping ground. Seek forgiveness, not permission. Desert and a pond. We not might we might not make it out of here. If you're watching this, something happened to me and Josh. He works here on the ranch. He's just fishing. Yeah, he's just fishing. He just works here on the ranch. He could have he could have been a bad guy out here doing bad things. After all, we're here looking for something connected to a bad guy doing bad things. He could have been that guy. He probably is that guy. I don't know. Let's go. Just don't let him see the camera right away. You wanna come out with me, man? Yeah, yeah hell yeah. Nice. You're a natural. This over here is live scope. This one is? Yeah. That's the top of the, the bottom of the boat, and then that's the bottom of the water there. I see it's seven, almost eight feet deep. You ever find somebody in the vehicle? All the time. Yeah? Yeah. You want me to point you to where I'm talking about? Yeah. Or where are you going next? You're gonna run to this hidden lake. There's gonna be some in there. Yeah. Their husband, the guy that owned it, got shot and killed there like mm -hmm. three years ago. Really? Like crazy shit over there. Okay, so explaining like what it is that we do and whatnot, that th these are great areas for you to recommend based upon like activity around sure. there? Or? Yeah. Okay. It's real secluded. And Very secluded. Okay. Super secluded. Okay. Yeah. Looks like we're going to Hidden Lake. What could be hidden at Hidden Lake? We're gonna find out. You have a great day. I'll be in touch. Richard Vladek, pictured with his wife and children, shot and killed. Barry and Vladek apparently had an ongoing conflict with each other over property ownership. Vladek owned a 5 million square foot property down the street called Hidden Lake. After exchanging words Monday night, Barry grabbed an AK-47 from his car and fired at Vladek, hitting him twice. He claims he was trying to shoot Vladek in the legs and did not intend to kill him. My name's Doug. You look familiar. You look familiar. Really? Uh, yeah. So, so uh, we travel investigating cold cases, right? I can know you. Bro. Yeah, yeah. What's going so, on? you want to take this out? I'm trying to get in the lake, man. I got you, bro. Cool. He knows who I am. He said, come on in. It's not a really creepy spot with something weird going on. It's actually a very, uh, uh, you know, sort of a low key, high end private place for like weddings and huge private parties. I mean, trust me, a lot of people, you, you could imagine how many people sneak in here and try to. Oh yeah, yeah. It's hot. Yeah. Mission objective is to get this scanned and in and out in a really Timely fashion, preferably before nightfall. In about an hour and a half. Five feet right here. Twelve feet over there. It looks like we have a vehicle. Been there a while. Exactly what we're looking for. 
We have a case from the 70s and the 80s. Is this an accident location or jumping location? Uh, I mean, it, it could possibly be an accident location, but we're not here at Hidden Lake looking for accidents. We're, we have several extreme foul play cases on our list, and uh, this fits in the, the scenario all day long. There it is, right there. We're coming over it, watch, watch. Bam, look at it, look, 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 it's a pickup truck. Look at that. Watch the magnet go down at the top of it is at seven feet. We're gonna finish scanning so we know exactly what we're working with in here. And then, uh, looks like we're gonna be out here after nightfall. You guys are gonna start hearing a lot of gunshots out here uh, in a little bit when we're out here diving this car or whatever else we have. It'll be pretty intense. That vehicle back there could have, it could be answers for a family. In 2014, Caleb Joseph Powell vanished from right down the road where we're at, right here in Maricopa County. He was driving a blue Dodge pickup truck. This could be big, knowing that we're looking for a pickup truck in one of our cases, and we just located a pickup truck in a dumping ground in the region where Caleb vanished from almost 10 years ago. He will bark at you, but he won't do shit. Hi, hi, hi. No. No. <laughs> hi! 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 You big babies! Oh! Oh! We're gonna distract you guys. <laughs> They're be chasing them. And... Oh, they're fine. They're fine. <laughs> he doesn't trust nobody. That's good. Nice. That's good. Hi! That's, that's hi. Right oh! Hi, killer! Hi, killer! <laughs> we got, we... We got a truck, man. Holy we, we got a truck underwater right over there. And it just so happens, like, you know, one of our cases that we're searching on, a guy's missing in a truck. I got you guys streets. Come on. Let's go in the car. Street. Yeah, give me like, give me like 30 minutes and we'll have this dove on and be back. Sure, got you. Come on. Hey, leave him alone. He's working. Possibly license plate number, maybe VIN number. Doug knows what he's doing, so he's definitely going to come up with some kind of answers right now. Zero bits. Nothing. Like, complete lights out. Can't even see the flashlight, really. Uh, and it's like quicksand, it's like murky, really light. It's not even mud, it's so light. <sighs> Buried, I dug down to get the license plate the second I touched the corner of it. Um, 
it just crumbled, so I didn't want to mess with it. Uh, it's been down there quite some time. I easily put the knife right through the side of it. So, two front windows are open, completely full of uh, silt. Two rear windows are up. Uh, back window is intact and the front windshield is intact. So all of the windows are intact and in their natural resting position other than the front window, front two windows, passenger and driver front two are all the way down. Not busted, they're, they're rolled down. I didn't feel any cracked glass along the seams. Uh, didn't feel anything else. I would say it's a 90s model, uh, F-150. It's a dark color. Um, at times it looks blue, it could dark blue, it could be black. F-150. We will take our marker off. We'll notify authorities in the morning, see what they want to do. The emblem should probably narrow down the years, uh, at least the decade, for sure. This vehicle isn't one of the vehicles that was on our target list. However, we're gonna reach out to the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office in the morning to see what they wanna do about this vehicle. It may be recovered, it may not, but we're gonna go off of them. If they want us to recover it, we will. We have the towing company on standby ready to do so, but it's a huge process of elimination. This is not our last stop. We have a lot more to go, so stay tuned. If you like what you just saw, make sure you hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, let us know what you think. Uh, we're at Canyon Lake Boat Ramp in, in Tonto Forest.